Okay. Um, all right. Welcome everyone to the uh, February 4th regular meeting of Village Council. Um, we have already called the meeting to order and just came out of executive session. Um, so next up are announcements. And I heard that Tim Baum was here to make an announcement. So I'll let you go first. Yes. <laughs> See? Looks All like right. he's got somewhere to be. That's right. <laughs> I wanted to get ahead of everyone before people left. Right. Mm. Good one. Okay. Can I stand on the other side? Uh, sure. Here. Yeah. You can. That that mic comes out. Just make sure to talk into the mic. I still have to talk into it. Yeah. So that are not too close, or it'll move. There we go. Oh, okay. Is better. Yes. Okay, so is everyone in a bit uh, aware of the utility roundup program? Maybe, maybe not. So uh, we're finding that there is a little bit of confusion, so we're going to tweak the way that we kind of put the information out. One of them, I'm coming here today just to talk to everyone. Uh, so at your, when you see your bill, a lot of times if you see it online, it gets cut off about here, or maybe you just look for your number and move on. But this bottom portion, if you just sign it and check off one of these boxes, and just mail it in with your check or put it in the Dropbox at any time. That's how you sign up for the program. Uh, what it is, is you round up your utility bill to the nearest dollar, full dollar, and then 100% of your money that's donated goes directly to people who apply to, for help. Uh, so far, the Community Foundation gave us a big grant to help get it started, and we have already had a couple people accepted for the application. Uh, you have to do all this extra stuff because unlike other communities, we decided for an opt-in rather than an opt-out. So uh, rather than just being forced to give money every month, we're giving you the option if you want to do it. So it takes a little extra paperwork. Um, Tim, Tim, could I, you might want to explain mm -hmm. that you can sign up and still pay your bill online. You just have to sign up one time on paper. Yeah, it's just a one time we need your signature to kind of say it's okay to take your money type of situation. Uh, so if you do automatic bill pay or whatever, you can print that out, you can do this. If you do the mail every month, just cut this off and send it in. There are some extra ones out in the hallway for everyone. You have to put your address on this one because this one's a blank one, but if you know anyone that wants one, this is really helpful. And you can drop them in the box downstairs yeah. in the wall next to the utility office. Thank you. Teamwork. All right. Thanks, Dean. Yeah, I have, I have a comment question, I guess. Comment you can also round up to the nearest $5 or $10. Oh, or, yeah. I'm not trying right? to go for those. Right? You <laughs> can right? give a donation of anything that you want. There's a section for that. But round up to the next dollar would be awesome. More than that would be great. All right. Thanks, Tim. Thank Thanks, you. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate you. Um, I have a few other things to add. Actually, can I? Say happy birthday to Johnny Burns. Yes, yeah, sure. All right. So I know we're, we're birthday buddies. Johnny's birthday's tomorrow. And uh, I heard that uh, it's Mike Neal's birthday as well tomorrow. All right. Yeah. So enjoy. Are you also joining the 50 Club? Wow. All right. <laughs> He's a real um, great beard. Yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to mention that our next council meeting will be on Tuesday, uh, February 19th, because of the holiday on the 18th. Um, and uh, I wanted to give a shout out to the Euchre tournament happening this Saturday uh, to support the YS schools. Uh, I'll definitely be there showing my support, and I would encourage everybody else. Uh, all right. Um, any other announcements? All right. If not, we'll move to the consent agenda. We have the minutes from January 19th, uh, which was our retreat and the minutes from January 22nd, and I'd love to get a motion to approve. I move. Second. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Next up is a review of the agenda. <coughs> so anything we need to move, add? Um, yeah, I had submitted a report on transient lodging, but it didn't get into the I had sent you an email to say it was moved to the next meeting. We had initially said it would be that meeting, and it was oh. not on the agenda. So, oh, okay. That is where it is. If you look on future agenda items. All right. Uh, the other thing was I was wondering if we might want to move special reports to before citizens' concerns to let.
people who are making special reports leave early? Oh, I, we have some special reports, and I was suggesting we might want to move them ahead of citizens' concerns so that staff people and other people giving the reports could leave early. Um, okay. Uh, is everyone okay with that? I'm okay with that. All right. Sure. Then we'll do that. Um, anything else? Yes. Um, on the table, I submitted um, for our re-review um, the document about the Yellow Springs Police Department organizational assessment. I would like some time to talk about that tonight. Great. Okay. Um, old business? Um, you know, actually, I know it's unconventional, but I'd like to move it to right before citizen concerns. Because Thank I you. think it's relevant to um, what okay. people might be commenting on. Yeah. Can I uh, just say if the goal to, is to get staff out of here early, Denise does have one item under new business that will take about five minutes. I don't know if you want to. Yeah. Hey, Officer Frank Doty is actually giving a report. Um, so okay. okay. So you may have to wait on that part. <coughs> okay. Um, anything else? All right, uh, then Marianne, petitions and communications. Yes, we had a number of, of email letters that came in mostly at our last meeting, but because they didn't make that packet, they're in this packet. And they are from villagers in support of Dave Meister, and I'll read the names of those letter writers. Kate Anderson. Heidi Brown, Virginia Cottle, Eric Clark, Kay Curley, Dan Duffy, Linda Fisher, MJ Gentilly, Aaron Hankey, Vicki Hennessy, John Hudson, Peggy Kobernick, Leslie Lippert, Carlos Landeboro, Summer McGuire, Sharon Moeller, Kate Mooneyham, Pan Rich, Oh, right, he says right. right. Laura Skidmore, Maxine Scuba, Thad Triplett, and uh, then the village manager had an uh, announcement about the utility roundup program. Okay. And I think the highlight of, uh, of that uh, flyer is that um, if you would like to uh, ask for funds from the utility roundup, uh, you should do that by the 20th of each month. And I know we'll talk about some of the people that uh, were able to uh, um, keep the electric on because mm -hmm. of the program, yeah. which is great. Um, okay, and I saw Carlos came up to sign up. If you do want to speak at Citizens Concerns, it's always great to get you on the list, which is right in front of Canetta. Um, so let's turn to public hearings and legislation. And uh, first up, we have the second reading of Ordinance 2019-03. And... Uh, Judy, I think we can just do that by title only. Sure. This is repealing section 290.01 of the codified ordinances of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, and enacting new section 290.01, court night. All right. Can I get a motion, please? Yes, I move. Second. Um, all right. Judy, are you explaining this one? Yeah, and it's very simple to explain. For at least the last nine years, court has been held on Monday afternoons at 4 p.m., but in the um, codified ordinances, it states that it shall be held on Tuesdays at 7. And so this just corrects what has already been going on for many years. Okay. Any questions or comments? Um, citizens, questions or comments? All right. If not, uh, Judy, if you could call the roll, please. Indeed. McQueen? Yes. Sanford? Yes. Stokes? Yes. Krieger? Yes. Housh? Yes. All right, um, and the other piece of legislation is Resolution 2019-04. Um, uh, Judy, I think we can read that one in by title only as well. Sure, this is authorizing the village manager to enter into an exclusive lease agreement with SBA Properties, LLC. Okay, can I get a motion, please? I move. Second. Second. All right, Patty. Um, as council knows, we were contacted by SBA Properties <coughs> who, um, they lease the property on which the cell tower at Sutton Farm sits. Um, they wanted to provide a one-time lump sum payment to buy out that lease and make it a perpetual lease. 
um, staff looked into it, did the calculations on the return that we currently get off of that lease. Um, the $280,000 lump sum payment that they have offered, it would take us 15 years to recoup that. Um, now, do we all know 5G is coming? Yes. Um, we're sure they have plans for that tower. We don't know exactly what they are, but staff's recommendation is that um, we accept this one-time lump sum uh, payout. We have worked through the lease agreement that is attached with them. Legal has approved it. Um, and then that's pretty much it with the one caveat that we did ask council to uh, think about earmarking half of that to clean up the spoils pile at the farm that Johnny has been talking about that um, we've allowed to grow over the past 10 years or 15 years that needs to be properly disposed of. Okay. Thanks, Patty. Kevin, do you want to, um, I, I don't know if, did it get on, did we get copies of Thor's email that I? No. Yeah. Um, Kevin, do you want to just highlight what, we got a message from SpringsNet um, that I think is relevant to think about? Yes, I'm going to just babble until I can pull the email up. <clears throat> But I've been in conversations uh, with a couple of members, members of SpringsNet, and, and they're effectively just encouraging us to um, tread carefully uh, into the agreement. Um, and it's not so much um, to, it's not a matter of protecting um, the village from, from losing anything, but just losing an opportunity to perhaps gain additional revenue um, because part of the argument is there's only one provider uh, you know on the tower now but the expectation would be that, that situation would change uh, rather rapidly and so I'm not gonna be able to pull the email up quickly but the, I think the gist of the things that they're saying is um, it might be of more value than what is being considered well, I, I actually had a similar conversation with Scott Fife this afternoon, mm -hmm. and um, the the company that um, holds the tower lease there is the only company that is not going to run fiber um, to um, to uh, disperse their 5G network. Um, I I understand where Scott and Thor are coming from, and I they make a good point. I still am in favor of accepting the buyout. So if we tabled this until our next meeting, mm -hmm. would that is that a problem? I would have to ask them for another extension and it could potentially change the amount of the buyout, potentially. Okay. The one thing I will highlight that I highlighted at our last meeting is that in the lease agreement, it does indicate that um, the municipality Yellow Springs um, can put things on that tower right. and um, the mock lease that they gave us which was for a municipality in Florida mm -hmm. also referenced that uh, their county could do the same so I, I, I like that piece of it um, which I do think speaks to part of what SpringsNet was getting at that we may have future initiatives where we would want to use part of that tower. Right, and I did explain that to Scott when I spoke with him. Okay. So I guess my question is, if, if we were to table it, for what reason would we table it? What would we do in the intervening two weeks that? Um, my impression was that SpringsNet had not really looked at it carefully. They just found out about it. So um, part of what I got out of the email was a little bit more time to look at it. So, so anyway, I mean, that's yeah, and I don't, I don't suspect that we're talking about another two weeks. Um, I don't know that there were any hard, any hard um, timeline, you know, that the company was was up against. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've just asked them to extend it twice already. Well, we are mm -hmm. deliberate, and we want to get subject matter expertise, you know, involved in the conversation. Um, doesn't mean that anything will change on our end, mm -hmm. but I think in terms of uh, doing our due diligence, it would be worth it. I mean, this, uh, whether it's SpringNet or anyone else, it's folks that we trust 
that do have our best interests uh, at heart. Um, and relative to what this tower could uh, procure in terms of revenue for the company, you know, the, the funds that they're offering us are really very small in comparison to what they could gain. Oh, I agree. I agree with that. So I'd be willing to just, just give us a little bit more time. I had also raised the issue last time of we have no control, apparently, over what they put on the tower. I didn't read. In fact, the onus is on us for not doing things. So, and I had asked, is there any, do we have any assurance that, that they're going to put something that we're okay with? And I don't know what we wouldn't be okay with, but we don't know what's going to happen five, ten years, 50, 100, 200. Yeah. So was any, is there any, uh, do we have any say, do we have any assurance that what's going to be up there is going to meet certain standards? Well, it will be approved tele uh, telecommunication equipment approved by the FCC. I mean, other than that, I can't really give you any assurance as to what exactly it will be because it will change over time, I'm sure. Well, if no one else has an issue with it, I would um, propose that we table it at least until our next meeting and we make sure we uh, have a conversation with the Springfield <coughs> folks in the meantime. Will you put that in the form of a motion? I so move. I second. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I guess when you talk to SpringsNet, I'd like, we don't know what's going to be happening. Mm -hmm. So at least if people who have some idea looking into the future of what might be there, I'd like to know what their thoughts are about mm -hmm. that. Okay. All right. And I would like this to be on the agenda for the 19th. Um, I, I don't anticipate that we need to delay beyond the next meeting, but, you know, I, I, I think the, the thoughts are good. Um, okay, so we said that we would move special reports up. So do we have someone here from the Environmental Commission? Tom is coming. Okay. He's not here. Um, Johnny's Johnny, here. Public Works, end of the year report. It's been a busy year. Yeah. And we're only starting and it's already been busy. So you've had a chance to look over it, I take it. If, I guess what I want to make sure is, is uh, if there's anything that you see that you want explanations for, or I can go through and highlight some areas uh, that we have accomplished. Um, yeah, I think highlights would be good. Okay. Um, yeah, I think you know most of these are issues we've definitely you know, right. talked about. So. The pool, I think talking about the pool, because that was a major yep. effort, I think. The, uh, we'll start with streets. Uh, we was able to get the uh, sidewalks downtown ground down, and I think it has improved uh, with the trip hazards. Um, we've got the ADA handicap ramps down Dayton, West South College. They will be wrapping up as soon as they can finish the crosswalk. Uh, it's got to be like 50 degrees to be able to put that material down on the ground. Uh, when we go into the Bryant Center, we was able to do the repaving of the Bryant Center, put in new curbs, along with paving Corey Street, Railroad Street, and West Limestone Street. Uh, at the same time of doing those, we added another catch basin on West Limestone, or East Limestone, uh, right past the hotel to help slow the water down going into the yards over there. Uh, we replaced two catch basins in the Bryant Center parking lot that was in desperate need of it they was failing fast so we was able to get them in right before the paving um johnny can I, yes ma'am so the catch basins go into the sanitary sewer no ma'am they go what? to the creek they oh. actually catch the water for the storm and uh take it down to the local okay. creek yeah. um we was able to paint a lot of the bryan center we got the youth center done we got the new floor in the painting of it we was able to uh make some changes in the gym, some carpet on the stairs and seats, tile on the back doors, was able to redo the back drywall in the back two entryways. Um, we pretty much finished the police renovation downstairs. We removed a lot of old tile and put in carpet throughout, kind of deadened the sound, made a difference down there. Um, 
And then we actually got this up here painted as well on the second floor. Um, you've probably noticed that we've already started for this year and the Bryan Center downstairs is getting a little bit of TLC as well, different paint job going on down there and cleaning it up, making it look a lot nicer for the uh, staff, the citizens, whoever comes to the Bryan Center to let them know that we actually care about what we, where we work and who we represent. So uh, gym floor was done this year, kind of at the same time. Um, the pool, tremendous job put forth by staff, council, uh, local builders in town to jump forward and took on the challenge of getting it up and ready and safely open for the season. Had a tremendous year, uh, got a lot of compliments on it. Uh, we did new diving boards. We got a lot of the uh, side stones remortared in. Uh, we put a new pool roof on the uh, chlorine house. Uh, we have restriped the bottom of the pool. We did a complete paint job on the entire pool. We took out some trip hazards by grinding them as well. Uh, We've fixed a lot of holes around it. We have fixed the baby pool. Uh, it had a drainage issue. They was filling it up daily. And this year, they was actually filled it up at the beginning and only put in water as it needed it when it evaporated. So it actually was working good. We put in a new exhaust fans for the staff to be able to suck out the chlorine fumes and all that from the pool, from the pool houses. Um, and they're actually up there working now. They're actually finishing the rest of the project. We waited until the end of the season, but the main concession stand and the two locker rooms will have a matching metal roof as is the other pump house. So once we get done with that, I can say we come in under budget with the money that you allotted us and we got a lot more done than what we anticipated. Um, one thing that we did at Gump Park and Ellis Park Subway and the library as we um, resealed the blacktop, cleaned it up, we got to reseal on it. We restriped all those. I can't tell you the last time Gaunt Park was done, and neither can half the staff that works here. So we did uh, put two more handicap spots out at Gaunt Park. We are going to put signage on there to where people can park closer to the diamonds and closer to the pool. Uh, Ellis Park was done. Uh, shook as part of their uh, water plant endeavors. They paid for a new shelter house out at Ellis Park. Uh, we actually helped them demo the old one to save on cost. And it is a very nice looking shelter house. We're gonna do some more improvements. Uh, maybe put a couple of standing old barbecue grills out there so people can go out there and enjoy that park uh, starting this coming spring. Um, Gump Park, another thing that we did this year, which has helped some, but still in the process is for the sled riding hill, we removed the electric poles that stood in the middle of the hill. Uh, so we put, the, put that wire underground. We also had dirt hauled in that was given to us and we kind of leveled out to the bottom of the hill. Some people like that challenge to see if they can actually go past that. So they go and hit the fence. We did remove the uh, hay bales because what happened is is the hay bales freeze and we had a broken ankle from it last year when they hit that the the solid block of ice does not move so if you're hitting a fence if you go about 30 feet to the uh, south you will miss the fence and you'll have a lot of outfield to go into <laughs> if you're going to hit the fence bail off <laughs> so uh, one of the biggest jobs that we undertook this year was the storm water at Kingsfield Court. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it was almost three foot deep in the roadway going into Kingsfield Court. We found out it was a weeping willow it had been planted at the very beginning when that plot was being built in the 90s. And we had to take down the weeping willow. We had to dig out 25 foot of 18 inch storm that was completely impacted by the root ball. <coughs> so you imagine roots now we <coughs> staff and I worked on it for over a week trying to grind out roots we actually got out 15 foot but the other 25 foot was too impacted and uh, majors come in and help us with that did a fabulous job they had never seen such a 
root size. I mean, it didn't even come out of the concrete. The concrete and all come out when they pulled the root out. So we've had some major rainfall since then, and it's dry as it was when it was put in brand new in the 1990s. Uh, on the same time that frame, or the same time frame, we actually did Wright Street. Wright Street was flooding at the same time. We found out that somebody that put a water line into their house actually trenched through the storm drain, covered it back up, collapsed it, and it had not been caught. So we was actually able to camera that line, find where that was, dig 35 feet of that up, placed it back, and we've not had a problem on Wright Street. These are just little things that we're trying to do as we have time. Thanks to Greene County and Fairborn, uh, they have actually come in. We do not own a camera. So Fairborn and Greene County have <coughs> graciously come out here many times to stick a camera in there, crawl it up the line, tell us where our problem is, and then we go in and fix it. So, uh, and that's kind of like Brian and I have been talking about for a couple, two or three years is collective working between each other, counties and cities and all that. We, we're too small and they're too large and we can help each other. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, again, I think, I mean, we found a manhole by Fairborn coming out and mm -hmm. sticking it down there, finding a manhole that saved us about $80,000. So, uh, sanitary sewer, uh, Vectran did a job over here right on Walnut and North Winter and they did a job and what they did is they come in for their job and they actually cambered about 9,000 feet of line, sanitary line. So they knew exactly where it all ran. They marked it all on the streets. What that did for us is we know what the inside of our pipes look like. So we was able to contact Dukes, which is a foam agent a company that puts in foam to kill the roots inside there. And we was able to foam about 15,000 foot of uh, line this year. We foamed uh, North Winter, North Stafford, King Street, all that area over there. And then we actually did Herman Street from Zinni Avenue all the way to Cory. In preparations that this coming year, we can actually get those all uh, slip lined for the mm -hmm. uh, new lining program. Mm -hmm. on, the, on the plus side, Vectron's coming in and doing more work next year. Mm -hmm. So, and that project that they did this year is about maybe a fifth of the size of the one they're doing next year. They're doing, I think, 10 projects in total next year in the village of Yellow Springs. So we're gonna fall right behind them again, have root control come in, and then we will be able to know what the inside looks like and then put those on the slip line in at the same time. Uh, the water plant was up and running. They got it pretty much under control. Um, Brad's actually got full staff. Uh, we actually, the last uh, new person started with him today. So he is uh, getting them trained up and ready to go and they are handling the wastewater and water treatment plant and the lift station. He got some much needed concrete work that the groundhogs are making changes with and so we kind of gave them a new home by putting more concrete down there. So. Uh, the when they tunnel underneath of it, it just falls and breaks, and and so we had to get in there and jack it back up and put new concrete back in there. So uh, Brad does have some uh, needs coming this year, but we've got them on the budget, and uh, we'll get some things taken care of. We've got some maintenance things to do for him. Uh, electric poles, uh, staff changed about 25, roughly by theirself. We had about 10 to uh, 13 of them changed by a contractor. So total for the year, we're probably at about 45 poles uh, being changed out either by accident or storms or new uh, by contractors coming in. Um, staff also this year completed the Cresco facility. That was 100% done by uh, staff putting power back here uh, with aid to construction. Uh, took the electric staff and good street crew to pull in all the wire, but we got it done. Uh, and I can still hold my word that we was not the ones holding them up. <laughs> so they said that it was always the utilities. We made sure it was not the utilities that was holding them up. So 
And I, and I think it's important to note that aid to construction is something that they reimbursed. They the village reimbursed. For. Actually, they paid in advance before okay. we did the work. Even better. Um, staff also installed two new Tesla chargers out there this year. Uh, we got them signed up and lettered and uh, noted on the ground. Um, tree trimming was done by Gray's this year. We only have one section where we're waiting on some more frozen ground to where we can get in there. Uh, but Gray's did a a uh, great job as well. Um, we was actually working on the area that the ice storm hit and we had the most trouble with. And it was scheduled to be done on Wednesday, the following week, and the ice storm come in and helped them out. So we got some of that work caught up and we're waiting on some more frozen ground. Uh, water, that was probably our biggest accomplishment this year that we actually turned about 70 valves on the south end of town. We broke about 14 of them. Uh, we actually had to replace three of them, but uh, we got the valve exercising started. We was getting ready to do a flush and then we found out that we were still missing some valves in the system and we have located those. We actually had two valves in the system that were closed that nobody knew about. So we got them open. So oh, wow. we, were, we were working with the uh, EPA to get it back on schedule for early spring to where we can get a flushing, unidirectional flushing started and get some of this uh, iron and manganese out of the pipes. Uh, we had about six main breaks last year. We're at three this year, so it's not good. They just did one on uh, Shawnee Trail today. They did one on Glenview on Friday night. So the warm and cold weathers do not help the water lines. It's not the water line freezing. It's the ground shifting from thawing and freezing, thawing and freezing, and it really depends on the backfill that they used, and seeing as how we're sitting on limestone, that don't help. So, uh, the other thing that I wanna highlight before I get done is, is the GIS system. Uh, we were working with LJB. We had a meeting schedule, we had a water line break, so we rescheduled it, we got half of it done, but the GIS system is gonna be up and running here in probably a month. We got a lot of data to collect and we're looking forward to it. We're trying to get it also to where the electric system can be on that to where we can highlight an area and it will do a, um, like a one call system to the local affected area people uh, saying that there's a power outage in the cruiser doing that way the 500 phone calls to dispatch can be slowed down. Dispatch can actually dispatch us and, and get some things done. So we're trying to get a little bit ahead of the game. It happened when the uh, storm come through, actually one of the officers put out a one call, it slowed down the call. So we think it'd be a good thing once we get the GIS system up that we'll be able to handle that and make a positive thing. So Excellent. All right. 2019. Great. Uh, Thank you, Johnny. Yeah, Thank you, questions? Thanks. All right, Thanks. excellent work. Thank you, Johnny. Thanks to the team. Um, all right, Colleen. <laughs> Just I'm kind of throw, excited about it. Throw a bunch of initials out there. That's that's what Johnny did. <laughs> it works. I'm just going to highlight this first page that's up on the board. Everything else is detailed that gives all the breakdown of the front sheet. So for the uh, last year in review, the very top of the page on the left side is what um, I listed our estimated revenues, and that was what um, the budget was estimated to um, bring in, and that was $17,648,997. And then at the top on the right is the budget, and which is our expenditures for approval, and it started out at $10,543,564. Then there were four supplementals during the course of 2018, brought the uh, total budget up by the end of the year at 18 I said thousand eighteen million three hundred sixty two thousand one hundred forty six dollars and nineteen cents. So those were our budgets, our estimated revenue and our and our allotted expenditures. The next section is our actuals. Go ahead. I don't. Where did that uh, six million come in from on the fourth quarter? I don't remember about that. On the revenue side or the. I, well, the supplemental. Both. The supplemental. Okay. The, uh, 
the fourth quarter, we were um, we have to book basically. We had to put in the numbers at OWDA for the water treatment plant oh. loan. Okay. So we put it in on the revenue side as revenue okay. from the loan from the grant, OWDA, and then okay. it's also an expenditure because we paid our vendors. Okay. So that was a posting in and out. Okay. So the next section is your actuals. So, and every month, January, February through December is your, our actual revenue that we receive every month and then the actual expenditures. So this tells you what we expected to get in with our estimated revenue and what we actually received. We received $18,322,605. So we received more than what we estimated, which is always good. And then on the budget side, with our appropriations being approved for the 18362000 that first section, our actuals were that we spent were $17,215,000. $238. So we stayed underneath our appropriations. So if you look at our actual revenue and our actual expenditures, we had a balanced budget. We, in, in actuals, we yeah. ended up spending less than we received. So that's always good and we worked hard for that. Next se section is your statement of cash. That's your actual fund balances. It's like your actual checkbook. And we started at the beginning of the year at $7,919,191 and we ended at the end of the year holding out some encumbrances as we're holding out purchase orders we haven't actually spent. But with that being subtracted, we still ended our bank balances at $8,541,446. So again, we're watching our fund balances very closely and making sure that we're not depleting them. And then the bottom is your bank reconciliations. So this one sheet covers pretty much everything I could think of that would be easy to read, easy to pass out, easy to understand. And then the rest is all the detail for where the revenue numbers came in and where all the expenditures were. And that's my report for the year. If there's any questions I can entertain. Any questions? Yeah, this is very nice to see yeah. a balanced budget. and. Um, you know, I think also uh, we appreciate how much staff is looking at those numbers and uh, and uh, making sure that that we stay in the black. So, great I would job. like to use this format, um, and I'll talk with um, our city manager Patty to keep it updated monthly. That mm -hmm. she'll be able to put in her monthly report mm -hmm. for you, and then when I do my quarterly, I'll have all the detail attached every quarter, and maybe that will help keep it. Um, Keep everything updated. Mm -hmm. okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Great. Colleen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Keep up you. the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I thought I saw Tom come Tom in. Tom is there. Hey. All right. Let's hear what the uh, actually very impressive report from the Environmental Commission. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Tom Dietrich, Environmental Commission member, and uh, thanks for letting me share a few of the highlights from last year. Um, we did a new process of developing our environmental goals, um, trying to prioritize over all of the potential things that we could put our energy into. Um, so you can see that on page, was that, I guess page three it starts, uh, if you had a chance to look at that. It just summarizes what we did, how we did it, and what we came up with, and um, you know, trying to look at what was the, what are the most important things to the village? And what, what are those positive states that we want to achieve? And trying to frame it in, a, in that light and then head toward that as a goal rather than trying to fight against sometimes environmental issues or you know, you're fighting against something, but we're trying to create a positive future um, state. So there's nine of those. Um, which I won't read to you since you've got it in front of you. So uh, we'll go ahead and just give some of the highlights from a few of those. That, so we weren't able to tackle all nine of them, but we have um, started on five of those objectives. Um, and the first one, natural ecosystems are thriving. Um, did a lot on the glass farm. We'll wrap up the, the grant project. And a thing I want to highlight here was the great relationship that the village and Comps Land Trust and the volunteers from the community have come together to make this happen. So, you know, not only the, um, you know, the, the, you all, the council, but also village staff, 
um, you know, came out and, like John just mentioned, installed a bunch of signs out there um, and did some mowing. And uh, then volunteers were out and did a bunch of uh, honeysuckle removal. And of course, Land Trust is overseeing the whole thing. So that's a nice collaboration. And that will continue even though the grant's done, you know, the, that collaboration will continue. Um, the next objective, water is clean, groundwater, surface water, stormwater. Um, as you know, we've been advising on the Vernet situation and trying to, um, you know, stay abreast of the remediation planning. Um, no news on that at this point. I don't know where that stands because of the shutdown. I think we, um, they have a big backlog and we haven't heard back from them right now, but I know Patty Bates has been has reached out to uh, US EPA to try to get status on that. Uh, we s developed and distributed that stormwater brochure, so educational brochure to the community, and the source water protection plan. Pretty excited about that, although there is still some more work to do on that, according to the EPA, Ohio EPA. Um, they've requested some changes to that, so um, we will be working on that this year. Um, manage landscapes and build environment are healthy. Um, we're continuing the effort to reduce or educate about um, the, to help reduce the use of pesticides and some really nice presentations, well uh, attended and um, really interesting stuff on uh, pollinator regeneration as well as um, reducing the use of pesticides. And let's see, business and residential waste is minimized. This has been a hard one to make progress on, but we're continuing to do research and collaborate to try to identify some opportunities for increasing recycling. Um, and one potential that we're gonna explore the feasibility is on um, expanding, uh, providing the opportunity for apartment buildings. Um, some you know, larger apartment complex don't apartment complexes don't have that option for their residents. So Tom, related to recycling, yeah. are you guys also um, looking at the schools? We have not. All right. Yeah. Well, I, That's I, an opportunity. Yes, mm -hmm. it's, it's a huge opportunity. Mm -hmm. We happened to notice that when we had the speech and debate tournament that uh, all these water bottles were going into mm -hmm. the landfill. Okay. Yeah. So we'll add that good. To the list. Yeah, that's another good That'd opportunity. That'd be great. Yeah. And with, I think, this information from the, you know, we're trying to, our current um, contract doesn't provide or doesn't uh, force the, the haulers to go to the, re to the apartment building. So we're looking for an alternative, and that alternative could maybe apply to the, to the schools as well. So cool. Good, good thought. Um, and then the climate, uh, climate is stable and village is resilient with the sustainable carbon footprint. Um, as you know, you, you all passed the resolution earlier this year uh, supporting climate action priorities. So um, we, that kind of ends on a note that I did want to just mention that uh, if anyone's out there listening and interested, <laughs> we are looking for another uh, commission member. So. Um, we've had a little bit of turnover. We've had some new members and um, a couple have stepped down. So there is an, uh, at least is there a We actually one have person? one person that I forgot I'd like to approve okay. tonight. But, and another one we still have to interview. So okay, excellent. We have two people. Well, good. Excellent. Up. So that'll help because um, there's, as you can see, there's a lot of work to do. Um, and... Um, I hope that you all will look at these. Uh, at our, the goals that we have here, we're, we're going to have a retreat and update these goals this year. Um, we look forward to your input because we're trying to serve your interests and, and the interests of the, of the village. So, um, you know, look forward to this continued collaboration and providing you useful tools. Right. Well, I want to say I really like uh, this structure of identifying barriers and associated strategies. I did want to mention with uh, air is clean number four. Yeah. I didn't see it says strategies none proposed. I wanted to make sure that uh, you guys were thinking about the active transportation plan. Ah. Um, right. So okay. we just finalized that. That's huge. Yeah. And 
if we can have uh, EC thinking about this, you know, in addition to thinking about it from the transportation end and what Johnny's doing with infrastructure, that would be huge. Absolutely. Transportation is one of the big uh, opportunities. So uh, thank Great. you for mentioning that. I also wanted to, to comment on number six, um, the one that relates to businesses prioritizing sustainability mm -hmm. and are aware of opportunities to cooperate with other businesses. Um, I strongly agree with the barrier of lack of networking and um, for me, this year in the commissions that I'm a part of, so that's economic sustainability and art and culture, I'm charting a course that's centered on collaboration. And we just had our ESC retreat, you know, the other, the other night and spent the majority of the time trying to think about kind of a network connector map of everyone that's trying to achieve certain um, adjacent missions to economic mm -hmm. sustainability. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that art and culture plugs into that. I think um, mm -hmm. environmental work plugs into that. And um, when I think about the work that the council can do, I mean, if we, if all we're able to do is understand a network map of everyone who's trying to do certain things and connect them together, I think <coughs> we would be doing something amazing. Yes. So um, it would be nice to have maybe some cross-pollination, to use an environmental term, <laughs> between what you're thinking about in terms of um, improving networking opportunities um, with businesses. Great, great, thank you. Mm, thank you. Yeah, and I'll go ahead and mention, um, you know, number five, citizenry has access to local source organic food. You know, in our positions, we do uh, tend to get involved with, you know, various conversations, um, you know, across the board. And so I do know that, uh, you know, that there is a local food initiative, uh, but I don't know uh, for the meetings that I've attended that there's been uh, any discussion about involving uh, the Environmental condition, uh, uh, Commission. Right. Uh, and so you guys, I think, would, would uh, be a resource uh, for those folks, and, and I think we'd be a good source of information for them as well. Great. Trying to work to make sure that connection happens. Excellent. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. All right. Well, anything else? Excellent work. Really appreciate everything the Environmental Commission is doing, and, uh, and also that you guys are <coughs> really adding capacity, because that's been a, a big issue for council is that we need commissions that can help do this work and you guys are doing awesome great so thank you yeah thank thanks you. a lot thanks Tom all right. all right thanks Tom okay and then uh, Denise I guess we're good <coughs> you're gonna wait for Frank yeah and if he, if he doesn't make it then I'll meet him and wait later okay good then we will move to uh, citizen concerns and um, uh, if you guys don't mind passing that list down um, I just want to say a few things before we uh, begin citizen concerns, uh, and one of those is going to be uh, handing the mic over to Lisa. So um, I am going to be absolutely strict about uh, clapping. Uh, besides some of the comments that were made last time about how it impedes people's ability to uh, express their concerns, uh, because it becomes a popularity contest. Um, I was very concerned when I got contacted by several people who cannot hear the meetings because of the clapping. And so uh, I put the gavel up here. I don't want to have to use it, but I, I would like us to just be respectful. We love having citizen input. It's very important, but the clapping and snapping and whatever, um, I, I'm just going to ask that you don't do it. And if that does happen, then uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do. Um, I, yes. I'd like to tag on to that because I sort of mentioned it at the last meeting. A couple of us have also heard from people who attended the last meeting who felt pretty intimidated by that and did not say anything because they had a different point of view. So that, that's, that's, that's a, that is the main reason that I am uh, really concerned about the clapping because it really can intimidate people who feel differently. And it's important that, we're, that everyone, even if they're a minority, gets to have a chance to talk. 
So thanks. Thanks, Marianne. Um, also, I didn't really feel it was appropriate at the last meeting because emotions were running high, and um, I mean, the issue that I'm expecting most people want to talk about is uh, is a tough one for everybody, um, whether you know everyone believes that or not. Um, it's something that. Uh, you know, when Kate Mooneyham said that she hopes we don't sleep well at night, well, guess what? We don't. We're thinking about this a lot. Um, but I do want to make a couple clarifications because there have been a few facts that I think are important and they may uh, help frame people's comments. One of them is, uh, Patty, can you just clarify um, Officer Rafool's background? Because there's been some, uh, you know, there, there's just been some lack of clarity about what his experience is as an officer. Yes, um, Officer Rafool has been an officer, and they call them officers, with Summit Behavioral Health. He was not a road patrol officer in any capacity prior to coming to the village of Yellow Springs. So he has been here for, uh, I guess, nine to ten months now, um, and that is his only road patrol experience. Prior to that, again, he was at Summit Behavioral Health, which means he is in the inside the mental health hospital helping to um, control the clients and, um, you know, make sure that everyone receives proper treatment, that kind of thing. Okay. Thanks, Patty. And this becomes important to us because a, a main issue and why, you know, Lisa and I spoke uh, to the YS News was this issue about securing the scene. Not about how many people ended up being there once the scene was secured, but the scene, the scene being secured itself. The other thing that I think has become a little bit unclear is this uh, policy 342. Uh, there's been a lot of, uh, it was in the paper, which by the way, I thought, uh, Megan, you did a great job with the article. It was very balanced um, and informative. Um, and so I have this in front of me because there's been some cherry picking of the policy and I want it to be really clear what this policy says. So I'm just going to read a couple things. One of them, and this was quoted, but I, I think people are misunderstanding the words here, officers generally should not initiate law enforcement action while off duty. And I think it's very important to focus on the word initiate because there was no, the uh, issue that we are talking about was already initiated, all right, when the call came in. Um, and then it goes on to say, um, Officers are not expected to place themselves in unreasonable peril. However, any sworn member of this department who becomes aware of an incident or circumstance that he or she reasonably believes poses an imminent threat of seriously, serious bodily injury or death or significant property damage may take reasonable action to minimize the threat. And given that we are a safe community and that shots are not fired very often, I think this applies very clearly to this situation. So we may have different interpretations about damned if you do, damned if you don't, and we might get into that later. But the reality is using this policy to say that that defends not taking action when shots were fired, I think is a misapplication. Um, so then the last thing before we move to citizen concerns, I want Lisa to just briefly talk about her proposal. And it relates to um, one of the things we put in the packet was uh, a section of the charter, I believe it's section 17, which outlines the duties of council. I thought Laura Curlis actually uh, did a great job in her letter of uh, trying to identify the delineation between administration and council in a um, council manager form of government. But one of the things that was highlighted in that, and actually Megan highlighted it to me, is that it is definitely within our purview to investigate or assess our departments um, to improve them. So with that, Lisa? Sure, so um, something came in late to the packet. It was a return of a, of a document originally submitted on November 15, 2018 by me and Marianne McQueen that was part of the budget process as a request for budget to complete an organizational assessment of the police department in Yellow Springs. At that time, 
Um, I felt support from council, but also a sense of reticence that maybe, you know, it wasn't quite time. We needed to get the Justice Commission going first. Um, and my point at that time was, okay, but let's have the budget. Because then if we need it, it's there. And, um, you know, as, as Brian said, uh, yeah, we're, you know, we're not sleeping at night. This is a very significant disruption and crisis in our community that I argue goes beyond any individual or group individuals and points to a more deep-seated systemic issue that the council has the responsibility to investigate. And I think because of the nature of police work as a healthcare professional, it's sort of the same thing. You need to have people who have deep expertise in a particular field to really evaluate budgets, processes, policies, skill sets, what I would call as a nurse a head to toe assessment of really what's going on. And so tonight I'm asking my fellow council members to say this has to become a priority. This has to be something that we set in front of even some of the formation of the Justice Commission because any findings from this would inform our work. I think we have to do this and I have to, we have to do this right now. I think it's the top priority in our community. We have a horrible breakdown in trust between the community and the police and the council and our staff and we have to go after this. So I want to do this and uh, work with Marianne to find the right professional and move forward quickly. I'd, I'd like to, yes. to echo that. Um, you know, I didn't come on council to be an expert in police procedure or police policy or police training. It's not what I wanted to do. But as I've been thinking about this and losing sleep this week and last week, um, I have decided that the role of village government is to provide essential services. I mean, that is the primary role. And policing is certainly an essential service. And because there is a, a power dynamic in policing, it really rises to the top. Oh, uh, there have been a number of citis citizens who have suggested that there has, is a vendetta going on. I do not believe that is the case, and I have not found any evidence to that. At the same time, I've also learned over the years that whether or not something is actually happening, whether it's true, if that's the perception, it almost doesn't make the difference. And we have a president of this country who is demonstrating that. If something's said long enough, people will believe it. So we have a problem in our community, at least with a very vocal segment of the community, uh, as Lisa said, a uh, breakdown of trust. And I think it is imperative, given the power that the police have, that we have a police department that is trusted by the community. And none of us, and, and frankly, I don't know, I mean, maybe some of you are experts, but uh, I haven't. I don't think that's the case, that we really need to have this looked at so that it works. <coughs> for our officers and for our staff and for all of you and for all of us. So I think we're just putting that out now and we will be continuing to figure out how we're gonna move this forward, but to try and move the justice, to focus on the, to continue having meetings about this and this and this when this thing, the elephant in, is in the room, is we have to address the elephant in the room. All right, thank you. Um, okay, so with that, uh, I'm gonna start with who I've got on the list and then we'll go from there. And uh, Richard Lapides. Okay, um, Nancy Lewis. Well, of course, this does have to do with Officer Meister. Um, but sort of, um, I'm, asked for the organizational chart and it sort of surprised me that the chief of police reports to the village manager whom I don't think like you said is an expert in policing 
she, she is actually, I think. <laughs> and the village manager reporting to the village council. I was also told that the village manager should not initiate any uh, investigations into the police department unless specifically requested to do so by the chief of police, is what I was told. And that the village manager cannot initiate this outside investigation without the approval of the village council to whom she reports. So my question is, was this put to each and every member of the village council and did you, and you report to us as the citizens, did you approve this outside investigation? Did you, Mr. Housh? Um, I, do you wanna? Yeah, I, I'm not sure where you got your information, but that's, no, well, the organizational chart, yes, but as far as my ability, I, yes, I'll uh, as far as my ability to initiate investigations, I do have that ability, and I do not require council uh, approval to do that. So I'm not sure where you got your information. Okay. I mean, Chris can speak to that further if. I'd have to the, look in the handbook, but it's. Okay. Well, the, the the, under the charter, the discipline of any employee is my purview. Um, it, it actually does not fall to council, and um, I. But you answer to council. I do, but as far as initiating discipline, that is well within my responsibilities. So, if you report to council, does then the council approve of this action? And if not, then their disciplinary action should be with you. Okay. Thank you. Well, okay. I'm asking each member of the council if they did. I, I think that any time um, it appears that an officer or a staff member has gone against uh, what they're supposed to do, that that should be looked into and investigated, yes. So you were given the details and, and knowing what you know? I, I'm not going to go into things that happened in executive session, okay. but I, as I said, an employee, their their codes of conduct, and if someone breaches that, then there then that should be looked into. Yeah, sure. Everything that was reported does not show breach of any kind of code of conduct. I don't understand where that came from. The purpose of this is not to engage in a dialogue back and okay. forth for you to say what you. All think right. I just think that as the most trusted and respected officer on our force that maybe that's why he's being targeted. Maybe others on the force feel threatened by him because he is the best officer we have. Okay, thanks Nancy. Um, Troy Guard. Oh, that was for speaking. Hey, no problem. Um, all right, Carlos. Carlo Ladaburu, um, two uh, uh, sh short comments on two issues. About Officer Meister, uh, it would be nice, I mean, we have heard many testimonials supporting his service. Uh, we have seen many letters of support. It would be nice if this information makes it to his, makes its way to his personnel file so that he can be there. Uh, the other issue is the proposed uh, lease buyout. Um, wireless is going to be huge in the near future. And I am concerned that if this piece of land is in private hands, a company can decide to set up a regional hub and we may find ourselves, the whole village, just very close to the source, kind of having like a leaky microwave and that makes me really concerned. If it, is in, if it is the property of the village, the village has a lot of say of what is going on there. It is totally private, we have no control. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Carlos. Speaks to that last one, just sure. real quick. 
Um, Carlos, as far as what they put on that tower right now, we would have this, the same amount of say as what they would put on if it were a perpetual lease. That part doesn't change. They have the right to put on their tower what they want under, under the current lease. We don't have any veto power mm -hmm. on the power of equipment. Mm -hmm. well, then I may not sleep very well tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thanks, Carlos. Um, were there any other citizen concerns? Okay. Um, all right. Oh, yes. can, can you come back to the mic just so they can hear on the... Could I ask then that that be checked for clarification if in truth, if the village manager is supposed to have the approval of council before involving an outside investigation? Yeah, we can actually, um, some of the things in the charter speak to that, um, mm -hmm. but we'll, we'll put together a one pager that clarifies that language and have that for the next packet. Okay, thank you. All right, you. thank you. Um, okay. Do you wanna go ahead with the PUD? I guess so, right. so are, uh, do you wanna go ahead and do the PUD at this point, Denise? Sure. Um, I do want to mention um, the letter that you should be at your table this evening. Um, you have that letter from, yes, um, that this is not the fault of the applicants. Um, it was sent to my former YSO.com email where it was treated as junk mail. And being out last week, uh, it disabled the attachments and I didn't realize that until today when I followed up, so I apologize for that. Um, Jessica Yamamoto and Antonio Molina, um, Jessica is here tonight with architect Ted Donnell, are requesting uh, council's approval to allow uh, the planning commission to consider the rezoning from I-1 industrial mixed use to uh, PUD plan unit development on their property millworks, which is less than five acres, it's actually 3.997. Um, as I mentioned in my report, um, your approval tonight is not for the redevelopment itself. Um, but just to ensure that the PUD application would not be denied because of its size. Um, the reason they would like to rezone to PUD is because the existing designation as I-1 does not allow for the mix of uses that they're interested in having, particularly um, on the one acre lot, which you saw in your packet, <coughs> the artist studios with residential lofts above and a hostel. Uh, the owners want to expand the uses into a unified complex with businesses that are complementary to one another, and this would not be possible under the existing I-1 zoning. Um, and so staff is recommending approval of their request to go through the PUD process of rezoning with the Planning Commission. Any questions? Well, I, I presume that the new owners will have total responsibility for everything that happens on the property such that changing the zoning from I-1 wouldn't preclude any future uh, small manufacturing? Well, um, right. I mean, that's they, they're going to have to make sure that when they come with a preliminary plan that they put all the all those things into the into their application and it'll be looked at okay. collectively. Um, one of the things in the in the PUD purpose is to have a mix of uses and they definitely have that right now. Um, pretty much most of the things that they have um, or want to do would be allowed in the I-1, but not residential. Um, they could do a, they could still do the uh, greenhouse, uh, test kitchen, um, those kinds of things, but they can't do the artist studios and mm -hmm. residential. Yeah, well, I just wanna say, I think this project is really exciting. Um, I love uh, what's been proposed. Um, one thing I want to throw out there is uh, I want to make sure that access to the Little Miami Scenic Trail is looked at. I know that we have some stormwater issues, but I wonder, you know, if there would be a way to have a couple connections, maybe something that comes over, whatever you call the, the block there, um, that protects, you know, the trail. But it would just be nice for people to, you know, be able to hop right in and out onto the bike trail, so. 
Now, and one of the things in their proposal that it also is going to help, hopefully it might mitigate some of the traffic issues because not only right now it's just North Walnut um, as the ingress and egress for that property, there is actually a, a way to get in off of Fairfield Pike, but nobody really realizes that, and it's just a gravel dirt road. Mm -hmm. It's not right. something you would notice with this complete uh, revamping of the property as well as repaving, pa actually paving the, the parking lot. Um, they're going to um, have a visible uh, uh, <coughs> second entrance and exit. Excellent. Cool. So, but yep. we will definitely make sure that's part of Good. it. Good. And then also I, I love that the science castle may happen as well. Yeah. So that was yeah. a cool little piece Some of that. exciting things. So, yeah. And, and just to turn, swing back around to something I said earlier about the local food initiative. I mean, I was certainly excited about the test kitchen. And it, you know, with respect to the conversation earlier about collaboration and really hooking up different pieces of the community, it sounds like this proposal really does a good job in bringing a lot of varied interests together. Very promising. Yeah, they bring a lot of new ideas, fresh ideas. They got a lot of energy for it. So I'm. Um, uh, going to be meeting with them tomorrow along with the Planning Commission for a working session to review what we have so far um, and then see if there's anything else we need for the preliminary application. You would not be getting that application um, till March. Your, probably your first meeting in March. Uh, okay. Any other questions or comments? I so, support it. Okay, so then uh, do we take a formal vote? A motion to allow them to proceed would be useful that we've got it okay, clear. Great. Okay, great. I, I move that we um, allow them to proceed with the planning as for a potential PUD. A second. Right. I'm sorry. All, did I cut you off? No. You were good. good. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank Thanks, Denise. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Do, do they want to, yeah. does the attorney or property owner want to say anything? <laughs> My name is Jessica Yamamoto. Uh, thank you for approving Millworks to move forward on the on the zoning, um, or to go before zoning next week. Uh, we're looking forward to opening up those corridors and and bringing the bike path into the Millworks property, and uh, and hopefully there'll be more flow, uh, more parking, uh, also more integration and supplement to the downtown area. So, okay. yeah. Thanks, Jessica. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Okay, so we are going to go to old business then. So, do you want, do we get I think, are you gonna do, are you doing, let, let, let you're gonna do it for it. French? And then I sent him an email, but I don't know if it's okay. Okay, so, so planning and zoning <laughs> so, end of right, the year just report. as a quick overview, um, you know, we also were very busy in the planning and zoning office, our staff of one, but um, we do actually now have a part-time, part-time, part-time person. One and a quarter, there you go, um, th to help out. Uh, we highlights of 2018, we, you know, council approved our pocket neighborhood development um, legislation which was added to the zoning code. Um, we also had another 21 text amendments that are going to help with infill, which was a part of the, not only the vision plan, but the comprehensive plan. Um, staff really takes a lot of effort into making sure when we do get things that come before a desk that we, that we always take into consideration that comprehensive plan as well as that vision plan. Now the vision plan was done in 2010, it's not scheduled to be done again until 2020, but the, uh, but the comprehensive plan should be done every five years. That was also done in 2010. So as you know, planning commission started on it. We kind of got stalled with all these projects that have been going on. So um, we really want to bring that back to the table. We're gonna have um, a goal session tomorrow um, from one to four here. Uh, and in that session, we're hoping to, um, you know, try to set up a, our, what our timeline is going to be for getting this comprehensive plan back on the table. Um, we had a 47% increase in permits in 2018. 
uh, quite a number of those were due to the new transit guest lodging, but um, even if you back that out, we still were at a 17, 18% increase. Um, we had used Wright State University intern in the spring of uh, 2018. We did not get a call, <coughs> hmm, I don't know why, but we did not get a call <laughs> from Wright State to have an intern for this spring, um, so that's sad. Um, let's see, we also held nine conditional use hearings, um, had a number, several solar interconnection agreements that were done um, and approved by Public Works. We um, <clears throat> owned, never didn't have to have the Board of Zoning Appeals meet at all in 2018, and I think that really was a direct result of tightening up the uh, text amendments in the code and making things a little clearer to understand. Um, it's not so subjective. Um, and then, um, as I said, the transit guest lodging started in January, and we've had, um, when I wrote this, I think it was 32 permits. It might be 33 now. and. Uh, <clears throat> Several new business businesses received zoning permits in 2018. Uh, one is already open, uh, therapy counseling service. Um, one down two downtown. One is scheduled to open in March, and the other one I'm not really sure uh, when they will be open. Um, and let's see. We also issued 56 violations. Um, most of those were related to vegetation in the right-of-way, um, which usually happens between about June and September. And then um, we had a number of uh, meetings with people, architects, businesses, residents, schools, surveyors, totaling about 63 <coughs> meetings. And those are ones that were actually appointments were set. It's just not possible to track those that come into the office or call on the phone. We just have not been able to track that. So the, I'm sure it was three times that number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's about it. All right. Well, thank, thank you, you, Denise. Yeah, great work. And uh, I also appreciate your support of the active transportation planning process. We do which I saw incorporate that, you that as well. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I think we will now um, move back to old business. And uh, first item we have are the 2019 council goals. Um, okay. Um, so uh, I think at this point, um, I'm not sure we have a lot to drill down on with the goals. I know that pretty much everybody has contributed their ideas. So. Um, does council have any things that they want to highlight? I had two things. Okay. Um, one is I just was getting lost of where we're going to. We have the co community health assessment. So do we need to call out culture of health or do we want to just say the community health assessment just because the culture of health is a kind of a grant and its own thing? Well, so it's, it's under... Uh, the, for first the first one. goal yeah. for future ongoing. Um, oh, there it is. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. There it is. Okay, yeah. thank you. Then um, the other thing was uh, at the ESC retreat, um, the ESC were, was asking if there, there was enough emphasis on the uh, DCIC. I mean, it said the verb is utilize, which mm -hmm. implies that it already exists and we have a lot of work to do. So we could we could leave it at utilize with the understanding that means that we've got to get it before we can utilize it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So were you thinking that we should add something else or? Well, I don't know. I just want to point out that it's a, it's a significant amount of action to, um, to launch it. I mean, we could always do an and statement even though that's, you could say launch. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking about under the economic sustainability goal? Um, I'm actually looking at the first one as well where it oh, says okay. utilize YS designated community improvement corporation to promote affordability goals. So maybe what we need to do is under the economic sustainability goal highlight the launch yeah, there. that'd be good. Just because it's such a, it's a lot of work. Yep. All right. 
right. Thank I, you. I think that's a good addition. That's all I had. Okay. Um, any other comments about the goals? The uh, staff was asked to look through the goals and see if anything might potentially need to be pushed back. Mm -hmm. And the only one that we had any real concerns about was the completion of the review of the comprehensive plan because that is such an in-depth um, an in-depth document and it's going to take a while to go and do a complete review okay so is it possible that it would be finished in 2019 yes but I would be more comfortable with it would be continued to 2020 which goal is that Let's it's see. actually mentioned in several different ones it's in the engage in continuous infrastructure development um, which is the third goal um, it is then adopt that's where it says adopt updated mm -hmm. yeah so and we can uh, move that to future y yeah and it's uh, it it is mentioned a couple times throughout the goals I can't I'm looking for the other um, but um, it's also under oh, the yeah it's uh, under the second goal complete updated comprehensive plan yeah and it's um, under the execute economic sustainability strategy update comprehensive land use plan is in there um, so it's just I'm just concerned that because it's such a voluminous document that it might take a little bit longer to, to get that through okay so I think that's a good recommendation did you have something Marion no but what I would like is to have when we are, is this going to be the final with whatever you put in as tweaks so final in this working document well except the one thing I did want to talk about is that um, community engagement piece because um, we you know we talked about that a little bit at our retreat but I want to finalize what we're going to do with that um, and then we would bring it back and where it. is that already in here um, so this was last year we we took the eight goals and you remember we had the boxes and the survey monkey but we talked about how this time the goals themselves i mean they're great goals i mean i don't i don't think that that's the best way to engage input so we talked about maybe instead asking for input on the actions um and so i guess i just wanted to make sure what we were going to do and I know Judy's already kind of teed it up um, but we can then use that Facebook group and um, the survey monkey again and put out the boxes so, um, so I don't know so any thoughts about I mean do we just take the actions associated with the goals and get feedback on that or what do you guys think well I certainly don't think we should just you do the goals because they're they are so broad and mm -hmm. it really doesn't without the actions you don't really know what the goals mean so right. uh, you know for po folks to be able to comprehend you know what we're asking about or what we're proposing I think they do it does need to be the actions tied to the goal just uh -huh. sort of the, as a frame of reference um, you know so I would certainly just support moving forward whatever the communication plan and mechanisms are you know but if we want to get feedback uh, from the citizens it, it ought to be you know here's an overarching goal and these are the actual real life things that we anticipate accomplishing as part or to to reach that goal right I think putting the actions on the, the forms that people are going to fill out and drop in the boxes is going to be because last year it was crowded with just the goals on there. Right. Yeah, that's, you know, it's easy enough to do on via SurveyMonkey or yeah. Facebook. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure how we do the, the boxes either. Yeah. Unless you, um, unless you print them, instead of making it a quarter of a sheet, make it a half a sheet front and back you might be able to get the goals uh, the actions in then okay. um, we just have to use more paper but we did get quite a few responses that way. we did uh, yeah I mean I, I, 
I'm not sure how valuable that would be. I mean, I'm just thinking about what are the things that people are concerned about? Well, we're hearing a lot about the police. And yet if we look at that goal, which is seven, everything really about the police is under future ongoing activities as opposed to what's in line for doing now, and I think it should probably be flipped. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just wondering if we could do something simpler, saying these are the main things that we're focusing on. Do you have feedback on it? Because if, otherwise, if we put on all this, like, 50 things or however many it is. Yep, it's a lot. I, I just don't think we're going to. Mm -hmm. And we did say, you know, as far as the goal that we just use one, you know, word or phrase to summarize that. Um, and I think part of the concern ought to be what is it that we're looking for? I mean, quite honestly, mm -hmm. if I were an average citizen and you presented me with the goals, I'd say, yeah. I mean, what, I mean, there's, what could I disagree with? I mean, all of them are, you know, positive goals. Uh, I, just looking at the goals, um, you know, I, I would certainly be in, in agreement with them, even though I don't know what I'm actually agreeing with. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm, saying, I'm not saying you wouldn't understand it, you just wouldn't know what it means. You know, so the question is, we put out these nine goals, and what are we asking people to say about them? Right. Because I, I would, I would certainly see, yes, I'm in agreement, right? Because it, it's hard to really differentiate what's really going on in those goals because right. they are so overarching and positive, right? So last year, I think we asked them to choose their, t to either rank them or choose their top X number four or something like that. Yeah, we did have a prioritization. Um, what you could do is put just a couple keywords like affordable community and then evaluate utility rates, designated CIC, mm -hmm. you know, and have them rank, you know, the actions under each goal, one, two, three. I think you could get that on the half sheet front and back. And then where will that get us? Will we not do anything? As a result, it's on this sheet. I mean, if if something is says, oh, we don't think this is important, are we gonna, uh, we don't think it continuous infrastructure development, dig once is important. Are we gonna not do it? I, I mean, I, I, I guess I could see something that was more sort of in the narrative, <coughs> a one-page thing. These are the kind of things we're working on, and I. I, I a and give feedback, not ranking things. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, two things we talked about. You know, one goal is educate, right? Yes, and the that's... Environmental Commission talked a lot about that in the report. Um, we can always do a better job there. Um, and I do like the idea of having some room for feedback, you know, um, tactics and actions that we're not thinking about um, that we might want to think about. What are we missing? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, um, and I like the idea of simplifying it as well, because you know we'll we'll have access to the full documents on the website, it's in other places, um, and we could have physical copies where the boxes are if people want to see the whole document. Um, okay, so is that the route we want to take then? Um. Yes, and, you know, in light of the conversation tonight and the intention to launch a PD organizational assessment, I kind of feel like the 2019 actions can be tuned up and made more concise. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of these things would come out of an assessment, but the assessment, you know, it's, it's part of it, if mm -hmm. you will. So I, I don't know if it's a goal to just have it be less wordy. Mm -hmm. Did you say you don't know? If well, it should a be a goal, I guess, to have it be less wordy, but yes. it depends. I mean, the, the extra words do li give uh, clarity for us because we know we've had these conversations and we talked about things at the retreat, and, but I'm not sure if that makes it, maybe it makes it less 
clear for the community members because you're not as down in the weeds as we are. So then the question is, who's the consumer of this document? Is the consumer of this document us in which it's kind of our work plan and it can be written in our language? Or is our goal to have a document that's very clean and concise and we can say, you know, it's an elevator speech. I'm, when I talk to people, I say, I'm focusing on utilities, budget, and policing. Like that, it, that's concise, mm -hmm. you know? And um, so, I mean, maybe it's two different documents. I, I don't know, I'm sorry, to, I feel like I'm muddying the waters, but I don't know who the audience is. So I think what Lisa, what I hear you saying is sort of sort of what I thought I heard Patty say, which was, you know, here's the short synopsis of things, and if you want, you know, this big <laughs> glossary of terms or this, you know, expansive uh, list of the actions in detail, you have that, and, uh, you know, but so someone's not having to check a nine-page document, maybe just a three-page document. And another thing I think we ought to be careful of is in that we value the feedback we received last year uh, and some of the items that we focused on as a result of our deliberations and citizen feedback, where some of those things are meant to be multi-year tasks, they don't lose momentum mm -hmm. because they're ongoing efforts and even though maybe what folks are thinking might be a change in direction that you know, we can't like stop, you know, dig once, you know, halfway through or anything of that nature. So, so we started something last year and those things must reach their natural conclusion. Right. A along with acknowledging what this year's new appreciation for efforts might be. Mm -hmm. So, again. Yeah. Can I, can I comment on something that Lisa said, and actually something that Kevin said too that really stru struck me, is that this, citizens are involved in differing layers, and one layer are, are the folks on boards and commissions for whom this is a really useful tool. Yeah. And it really gives direction. Oh, this is, this is our job. We, we have these projects that we're supposed to engage in. Um, that's significant to me, and this document I think works on that level. But I like Lisa's notion of another document which is more geared towards someone who may not be involved in a border commission but takes an interest and has a particular thing that they like to focus on that's just readily accessible. Oh, I see that this council person does these things in this way and I should talk to that person if I'm upset about this thing or I want to get involved. I like that idea. I'd be happy to help with that. Great. I was just going to suggest that. <laughs> well, and so related to this, if we are going to, you know, have this uh, streamlined document, then I would encourage all council members to look at the goals that you're focused on, pull out those things, right, and and then Judy and and we'll work together to compile this. Um, I like that. I like that as well. And you know, I could see it being like. You know, affordability. Here are the key things we're doing this year. What else could we be doing? Right? So it could be something like that. So if we all participate in that um, and feed those comments to Judy by the end of the week, then um, on Friday we can make this go live. Um, so I'll well, get to let's, Facebook. Let's and, go over who's going to be doing what. Okay. Excuse me. I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but could everybody move the microphones a little closer to your mouth? We're getting a few complaints that the folks at home can't hear us again, and we're trying to figure out why. So, thank you. Can I make a comment, please? <laughs> is your mic on, Brian? Is I don't think it is. Um, yeah, come up to the mic. Yes. There is. I'm told, I know that, that this cannot be a back and forth. But is there any, any time that we as citizens can discuss this with council rather than we sit here or we stand here and we speak to faces that really give us no answers, no feedback? When can we have open discussions with you? Are you talking specifically about the police 
or in general? Well, actually, in general, right now it involves that. Mm -hmm. Right. But you know, I mean, I think any uh, anything that comes up, anything, any when we stand here, we're not allowed to ask you questions. You can't answer us. That's yeah. Well, I, I mean, I will say first of all, we're all accessible. Um, but and as a group, no, I th I, I think that is an excellent point. You know, at one point there were times when we would do what was called work sessions, where it was more mm -hmm. discussing. Thank you. Um, in in regard, and maybe that's really what we should be do could do with the goals. You mm -hmm. know, we could have a community meeting, and we could have we could do the goals that way. Uh, in regard to the police thing, I would imagine that as we start working on how we're going to do the police, that there will be some community engagement process. Okay. But we've just put that on the table. Yeah, we do have work sessions all the time. I, I would point out that they're usually not very well attended. And our meetings uh, about the goals were publicly announced and open. Um, so, I, I mean, I think it's great to have those discussions. Unfortunately, you know, this kind of formal meeting doesn't lend itself to mm -hmm. it, but, um, I mean, there are those opportunities. But if we know then that, okay, this is a meeting where you can, you can sit and discuss with counsel within reason. Sure. Yeah what you're concerned about and we have done that we and we actually have done that most recently with the police like when we were going to decide whether or not to get off the drug task force well it wasn't actually that recently it was about four or five years ago it was a community meeting people could talk there's back and forth mm -hmm. so okay right that that's my concern you know that's how i feel you know I'm sure talking. yeah well, I, I mean but the other thing is you know all our numbers and emails are all available, and we set up meetings but, all the time. Yeah. I mean, but I then think it's you know, different. I, I appreciate what you were saying, and and I get. I mean, and it's odd actually to sit up here and have someone mm -hmm. talk and not be able to. But, right. And at the same time, this is a session where we regularly are now going until ten o'clock. Yeah, so I understand. And we started at six. So yeah, <laughs> thank you. I do understand, but that was my comment. So I would appreciate. You know, if that happens. All right. Thank you. Okay. So back to our goal thing. Mm -hmm. So who would be number one? Um, I have some on one because of the DCIC mm -hmm. and utility. Um, I, mean, they're, they're, I think they're okay. Going to be well, there's low yeah. the housing, but the housing really falls into. I mean, I, I can, can write take the first one. I'll do the stuff about the housing stuff. I mean, if this, if we're and like, I, I don't see any one person have so having sole responsibility for a. Yeah, but we need to assign no, to, work, to or draft, else it's not going to get done. To edit the document. Okay. You know, because I, I mean, I, I'm not leading all of these things, but mm -hmm. I'm certainly touching them all enough to net down the language. Well, that's. I mean, I guess that's why I think. It, it's somewhat artificial to divide these out like active transportation yeah that one's pretty discreet I could take yeah. that but some of these cross over yeah mm -hmm. that's why I mean if we all look at the parts that relate to us and feedback those like key bullets to Judy we could start putting that together Yeah, let's see what it looks like. I mean, because if we each write, you know, I'm Lisa and these are the things I'm focused on, it creates, and everyone does that, we get a really maybe an interesting depiction of our focus areas, of the things that are actively being worked on, and the intersections. Mm -hmm. Well, and I actually, when I had thought about it, wasn't going from that end, but from the other end, which was, if you describe the, if you describe the goal, and then very briefly or in a targeted way what, what the actions generally are. But then if it's more than one council person, mm -hmm. it's more than one council person because you have varied actions. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's confusing or not streamlined. I think that's a, a, a good way to define it. Where I was seeing that more, just tightening it up for someone who's not as closely involved, like some, a member of a commission was, to, to make that goal a little easier to look at and comprehend. Oh, they want to do this stuff. Oh, they want to do it in these ways. And here's who's working on that stuff. 
just a little, just more simplified, basically, sort of the Reader's Digest version of this thing. And, it, and that it wouldn't necessarily be in this form either, but more this bullet point, this bullet point. Because this is, to me, this is difficult to look at, more difficult than reading a, a more linear, let me talk about this goal, what we're doing around it, and who's involved in it, that's more narrative, you know. That's just me, but, but that's kind of, I had thought of it as not limiting it to any one council person <coughs> or particular goal. Could you take leadership in this? Yeah, why don't I throw something together and then you, you, it'll just be a buffet line and then you pick out what you okay. want and we'll, we'll just go from there. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Cool. Um, all right, so then we will uh, target Friday to uh, get something online. <coughs> and um, Patty, are you able to help with boxes again? Sure. <laughs> Can you be a bit more enthusiastic? <laughs> well, and is someone, are you going to work on the survey monkey piece again this? Yeah, I'll do the survey yes. monkey in the okay. Facebook thing. So, so. But, but you're going to give me the papers that need to be copied and go with the boxes, right? You did last year. Yeah, so hopefully by Friday we'll have something that Judy and I can put together. Okay. So if I could, so Linda Fisher, if you're still watching the meeting and you still are having trouble hearing, could you email me again, please? Thank you. Okay. All right. So next is the village investment policy. And I think that's a quickie. Um, Lisa, do you want to? Sure. Um, we're looking at the village of Yellow Springs investment policy. Unfortunately, there's no footer, so I don't know the, like the date of the policy. Um, it was actually passed by council just maybe two years ago, tops. Okay. Huh. Probably right before you came on, uh, Lisa. Okay. So um, you'll see beginning on page two and three, there's two recommended, recommended changes to the investment policy. Um, the first has to do with the governing body in the, um, I guess before I jump in, I really have to say that um, we very much uphold these general objectives of investment activities that are safety, liquidity, and return of our investments in that order. So although we have been moving to invest more, we're always, um, our foremost objective is the safety of our investments. And I think this change in governing body um, supports that because the way that um, it's been worded now, the authority to manage the investment program is granted to the treasurer, and the treasurer is a role that's identified in our charter. And what we're recommending is that instead, the um, authority to manage is by the investment committee. And we've had a group in place now for um, six or eight months, um, focusing on finance and investment. The treasurer is on that committee when we're talking about investments, but it's not just that one individual. So this creates um, a more robust governing body for the policy. Um, then the other just says a little bit more about who's on that committee. Um, in the investment committee, it says that this decisions are made jointly with the director, the village manager, and the treasurer. And we believe that it's the responsibility of council members to be very directly involved in investment decisions of the, of the village and for us never to take a hands-off approach when it comes down to our taxpayer dollars. So as a result, uh, we're recommending a change to include at least one council member um, on this committee. Right now there's two of us, um, Brian Hausch and I, but we, we want council to all be actively involved in these decisions. So those are the only changes. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, and moving forward, uh, one of the recommendations Rachel had, our former um, treasurer, is to come up with a more defined investment policy, um, which is something in the works. But I think the, 
the what we're looking at right now is just you know this investment committee in particular having a, a council member or two um, so I guess any questions or comments about this I think uh, Lisa framed it very well um, so I guess we should um, have a motion to uh, approve the change do we need to bring back a yeah we yeah. need to bring back a new uh, revised policy okay. and I just was going to ask if you wanted that on the next agenda. Right. So we can't just use I, I mean we I can't think, just use this one. I think we passed it as a resolution last yeah. time. Did we? Okay. Yeah. All right. Then let's put it on for next time. And then it should be dated. Well, it'll be dated if it's a resolution. It yeah. whatever your write up was it yeah. just wasn't okay. in there so. All right. So let's put it on for next time then. Okay. Um, so we have one other item under new business, which is the candidate vetting process. And Kaneta, I think you're going to be leading that one off. Yeah. Um, flip to my. So currently, we are working on a weighted rubric for the first pass for the um, village manager manager candidates. Um, so with that. Coming up soon, um, February 15th is the deadline for the applications. Um, we're going to have that prepared for the first uh, citizen committee so that we can have um, that committee review the vetting process before we actually get started on those um, resumes. Um, and so with that rubric, we're really looking at, like I mentioned, it was weighted. So we're looking at the top priorities for that village manager candidate um, and so it will have a pretty much a zero to three scale from what we're looking at right now. Um, but we don't currently have it all the way done yet. So I do know that it'll be ready next time we convene. For next council meeting? Yeah. So well, it'll be ready before then because we'll already have the committee looking at it too. So is that that would be the process then the committee would review it and then count it would come to council yeah that way review. we can have that capacity built in okay you mean the committee will review the vetting process and then the vetting process will come to council for yes. approval mm -hmm. okay all right that works for me um, how's it going as far as candidates coming in they are coming in. Some of them are coming in looking very interesting and appropriate, and some of them are not so much. So it's a mixed bag. But we absolutely have, I mean, I do think that there's a definite pool of folks to be seriously considered even at this point. And we're, we're getting a, the numbers kind of increasing daily as, the, as we get closer to the deadline. So. Right, and that deadline is February 15th. <laughs> um, Please so share the link with your networks. It's really important. We're counting on the community to help us to identify the most fabulous pool of recruits. So please share the link out. And yeah, and that, that's probably a good um, reminder um, to update it on the website. Um, home page because you know as things get right. on there they fall down yep. um, and then also put it out on Facebook again yep. um, I know that we are doing the LinkedIn and that's generating um, some mm -hmm. applicants as mm -hmm. well um, okay all right so then uh, we were going to talk a little bit about the community engagement process Mary yeah yes um, and Kaneta and I, we talked about this briefly. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion is that we utilize this commission that we have formed. And uh, I was going to suggest that I would go to the commission meeting and facilitate a discussion on get the commission to develop what they think is a good process and then have them be actively participating in the engagement process. Okay. And knowing that we can utilize, if we need to, I'm assuming maybe HRC and 
the mediation program if there are roles for either of those groups? I yeah, well, we did have a mediator, the mediation program was involved in the final visit um, and, and helping to facilitate that. So, um, and Jalen Rowe definitely mentioned mm -hmm. that she was interested again if, yeah, if uh, we would like her to help. I'm working with Jalen on something else. So, mm -hmm. can, and Mary Ann, I can mm -hmm. speak to you know the different meetings and things that I had. If, if that document doesn't exist, huh. of who went where when. Oh, it does exist. Okay. Yeah, because um, we pulled all that stuff out. So, and I think actually you and Kevin <clears throat> to, both had all those documents like months ago. Like, uh, but Judy's got it all. <laughs> So let's let's just see. Well, yes. Believe it or not, yes. Yes. Yeah, right. Because we dug out everything. Oh, yeah, there's like a, there's a stack of stuff, and so that was one thing I was going to ask: is would you be with the citizen committee? Would you be using like showing them what we did before and facilitating the discussion that way, or just? Yeah, I think we should talk about what we did before. Okay. All right. So I guess um, Judy, you you have all the stuff that I forwarded you. Mm -hmm. six months ago or whatever right um, so maybe just kind of pulling out what looks relevant um, uh, to make sure that Marianne and Kanetta have you seen all that stuff I don't think I have okay and then I'll, ha I'll propose when we start working with the committee to do that after I look at the timeline again okay yeah, and actually, I did update the timeline, but I guess it didn't make it no, into it, the. It did. Yeah, I mean, there's just stuff that you, it doesn't go to council, but it, so I put what did go to council. We were, I don't see. On the it. timeline. Oh, oh, on the timeline. Or on the agenda. Timeline, I added the, I added. Right, because I changed it to the, the April date and everything. Yeah. Page 141 in the packet. Right here. It's, is it not linked to the agenda? Oh, on the it should be. Okay, because I, I just went off of the agenda to get the. That may have just been one we missed. Okay, all right. So it's I just. It's in the packet, but you're right. Yeah, it, it's not linked somehow, and I okay. did not catch that. All right. Yeah, so I, I was using our new technology yeah, to. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. cool. <laughs> so, um, so this is I mean, but I, I know because I created that document. So I, I, as long as everybody else saw it. But I did uh, in the timeline move the visit to April, like we talked about, and so. All right. Um, okay. So, uh, Judy, if you feel like you don't have any of the documents from oh, the I, last I do. search, okay, good. Um, I do. I'll just you know inundate everybody. And then you Thank can you. pick what you want because there is a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess that's all in process, and uh, let's talk briefly about charter review. Um, okay, so I asked Judy just to put in the full document from what happened with charter review last time, so that everybody could see uh, what the process was, and also it's a good opportunity to. See our full charter. All right. And um, I think that from our retreat, we basically talked about um, a few particular items that we might want to identify and probably not having a full blown uh, charter committee review process. Um, you know, just as a reminder, any recommendations for charter changes have to go on the ballot. So um, I think the first step in this is having a, a more in-depth discussion about what, if anything, we would want to put on the ballot, right? So what, what kinds of changes are really important? Um, and, I mean, we could also decide uh, <coughs> not to Forget it. do anything. <laughs> yes. So um, I guess offhand, Lisa, you're kind of looking. Are, I have my notes, it? yeah. Okay. So there were three, and I think maybe one based on a finance committee meeting we're already talking about taking out. One was to leave in or take out the treasurer position. Mm -hmm. And I think at this point we're thinking we'll leave in the treasurer position, so that's not a change. Right. The second one was the mayor's term. Mm -hmm. And I know there were mixed perspectives on that. 
And the third one that I have noted is vote 16. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and then do you want to just, since you brought it up, elaborate on the mayor's term? Well, um, I, I think I was uh, originally brought it up saying that um, I think two years is a, too short of a term because, I mean, speaking for myself as a council person who was elected to a two-year term, it's like there's so much to learn and to really get your feet under yourself. And the mayor is a very important role. And when I think of what, what Mayor Kanine has been doing in terms of <coughs> refining the processes and mayor's court, to, to have two years and then have turnover again seems like it could be disruptive. Mm -hmm. um, but at the re retreat, I, I did hear uh, some discussion, and this is absolutely not directed in any way at all to Mayor Kanine, but that maybe originally that term was in the charter so that if you have a mayor that the community does, doesn't like, you're not stuck with them for a long time, just like you're not stuck with a council person that you might not like for more than two years. So that's what I recall was the discussion. So, uh, and then vote 16 for folks that haven't tuned in before, uh, this is an initiative to do just that, to make our um, uh, age for participating in local elections 16. Um, several municipalities have done it in uh, uh, Maryland. And uh, there are even some states that are looking at this as a like statewide initiative, which could actually mean that 16-year-olds could vote for uh, you know state representatives and state senators. Um, and uh, it does seem that it's something that uh, resonates with a lot of people. Uh, this was part of our strategy document to try to figure out what uh, we could do locally to address uh, gun control. And by giving our youth uh, more uh, ability to vote and be engaged in the process, uh, that's one of the ways that they can help um, uh, make things change. Um, so it sounds to me like we have a couple items that we need to think a little bit more about um, and then make a decision if we want to put something on the ballot or not. Um, so did anyone have any other items that they either saw from the charter review or anything else that we might potentially look at? I, yeah, there is actually a little legal one that I can bring if you decide to bring other things that has to do with whether uh, what the quorum is in a planning commission decision as Ooh. opposed to a BZA decision, it's different in the charter than it is in the planning and zoning code. So we could make that consistent. It is right now charter trumps planning and zoning code, so that can continue to be that way. It's not creating an impediment, but it makes it more consistent if they're consistent. Okay. Um, all right, so then you'll clarify what that issue is in a future meeting? Okay. Yep. Um, all right. Do you, do you want to put revisiting that back on? The yeah, I mean, I think this was just to kind of follow up from our retreat. Mm -hmm. um, so then I think we need to, in March, make a decision if we're going to move forward with any of these things. Um, so Perhaps we could get some input from Mayor Kanine about the mayor term. She would be the best positioned. Okay. And on the uh, vote 16, I mean, the, would not a lot of that be driven through the county board of elections and so the way they have to rejigger something? No. Well, so they would make our, that would mean we would have, I mean, we have special rules. I mean, okay. just like any jurisdiction can have. Okay. So um, we've got to do a little bit more uh, investigation on that um, but you know the preliminary research suggests that because Ohio is a home rule state like Maryland that this is a possibility mm -hmm. so um, all right I'll focus on vote 16 Lisa do you want to talk to Mayor Canine about the term or were sure. you thinking about okay um, and then Judy's going to be responsible for the uh, Planning Commission thing. Mm -hmm. um, and on the treasurer, wasn't it that the, the language was not, it didn't say shall, so we don't have to change it? Is that 
it leaves latitude as to right. who fills that position. Okay. Yeah, I mean, even without it being in our charter, because one of the recommendations was the whole clerk treasurer, mm -hmm. um, that is, we can do that legally. It doesn't have to be in our charter. Okay. So. Um, okay, good. Uh, so we'll, uh, we will probably bring that back on the second, maybe the, well, maybe the first meeting in March. Okay. Okay. And, and then I was just going to throw out, Marianne, did you have a nomination you wanted to oh, throw in? Oh, thank you. Day? Thank you. Yes. Um, Mark Ewalt had been on the um, energy board. He had been approved for the energy board, and then the energy board went in hiatus. He is interested in being on the Environmental Commission and um, has come to a meeting and said he's interested and he's submitted a letter of interest. Mm -hmm. And I talked to Kaneta as the alternate if she needed to meet with him because I have already met with him and Kaneta felt comfortable with the fact that he's already been approved for a commission. Therefore, we would like to nominate Mark to the Environmental Commission. Yes. Second on your seconding Second, there. yeah. <coughs> All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Great. I'm sure there are no opposed. All right. And That's we great. do have uh, another person who's expressed interest. We have to set up an interview with her. All right. Great. Um, manager's report. Okay. Um, I am going to go over a couple of things. Um, in the packet, you see some draft legislation in regard to the car chargers. Um, as I noted in my last uh, report, this is getting to be a continuing problem where um, local citizens just plug their, their personal vehicles in there and charge them overnight. And um, that's not the intent of the car chargers. The chargers are for folks who are at the Bryan Center for an event or in town, happen to have an electric car, char uh, an electric car so that they can charge it. The village does pay for this. This is a free service that the village provides, and it's, it's not meant to be for people to charge their personal <coughs> vehicles overnight. Um, right now we do have signs up that say four hour maximum and no overnight charging that is they're just being completely ignored um, and the um, staff would like to amend the parking ordinance to include um, the car chargers there at the Bryan Center um, it's noted in red on your um, on your uh, sample there um, that way um, we can do a little grace period with some warnings that say, hey, this is enforceable now, and if they continue to do it, then we can cite them to mayor's court, because right now the officers cannot cite them to mayor's court. So. Sounds good. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're going to bring that um, to I, the next? I will bring that to the next, um, to the next meeting. Um, the and it is part of the codified so it will be an ordinance i believe yep. right yep um and so then again the utility roundup um we did have two um residents take advantage of the utility roundup the maximum assistance of two hundred dollars each um that was able to keep them connected which so success um, applications are due by the 20th of each month, so if you feel like you're going to need assistance, if you get a shutoff notice, please come in, please, and fill out an application. We would love to be able to help you with that. Um, and then the Green County Grant um, staff would like to request that um, uh, council consider using the Green County Grant to complete the uh, portion of sidewalk there between Fair Acres and Stafford that the village committed to completing as part of the Safe Routes to School project from last year. We're going to go ahead and do the engineering on that, um, but the grant would just about pay for the sidewalk. Um, How much is the engineering? Uh, the engineering is $4,000, I think. And okay. then the, F, the, the just rough estimate that we have on the sidewalk right now is like 20 3000 and something, and the grant is 22000 Yeah, $22,064. All right, so I'm going to um, suggest that we do not use the Green County grant for that okay. um, because of what I highlighted about the return on investment piece. Mm -hmm. So even though they did say we could use it for infrastructure, um, part of making the case for us to get 
more of a share uh, because they're talking about doing this annually, mm -hmm. I think is to show that we did something really good in terms of return on investment. Um, so I guess, I know we've got um, 10,000 set aside for the active transportation plan in the budget and 50,000 for sidewalks. So I guess, I, yeah, I, I'd, I'd like us to wait on the Green County grant um, and, and try to think about that return on investment thing. Okay. Um, so, um, but I do love that we're finishing this project. Well, we did commit what to it. What do you mean when, return on investment? Meaning that if we spend that um, $22,064 in a way that generates revenue beyond just, you know, uh, adding a block of sidewalk, then that was the big thing that the county commissioners emphasized um, about using those funds. Mm -hmm. So then, for example, if we applied that to the paid parking strategy, which has been brought up, all right, mm -hmm. the return on investment for that would be pretty significant. Um, and then we could go next year and say, look what we did with that 22,000. Right, we turn that into a lot more money to support infrastructure in Yellow Springs. So, about the sidewalk area that you're talking about, and what what is that area? It, it's just there. There is a section of where the Safe House to School project started last year. Um, there's a crosswalk coming over from Fair Acres that goes onto the south side of Fairfield Yellow Springs comes down Fairfield Yellow Springs to right. Winter and down Winter to meet right. the sidewalk at Pleasant. We committed to completing the piece between where the sidewalk is at Fair Acres down to Stafford Street. Um, ODOT did not want to include it in the project because there are some drainage issues there and it has to be completely engineered. So they did not want to include it and because ODOT um, basically ponied up the money for the entire rest of the project, the village committed to completing that. But piece. is this on, on Fairfield or yeah. Stafford? Yeah, it's on Fairfield. On Fairfield, okay. So it's just taking it west that of half a block up to Stafford. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. And so then we've got like a, a nice circuit. So is, would that rise to the top as one of the um, one of the sidewalk areas that you put the fifty thousand to? Do you know or? Well, it, it will have to be. I mean, because it's something we committed to doing, and ODOT wants us to hold our commitment. Okay. So yeah, probably not going to do it in the next month or so. Though. Uh, we'll do it when the weather breaks, because we're getting the engineering done now. So I mean, it, oh, I'm saying that because that would give time maybe to bring this other project, if that's what you were right. Considering. I mean, I was also thinking if we do move forward with that um, uh, cell tower, that that. I mean, th there's another 140,000 mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. 280 mm -hmm. that I'd like to do some community improvement projects. So, yeah. um, mm -hmm. so I think we should think about that as well as a possibility. Um, cool. Anything else? Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Judy. All right. I see that Brian <laughs> has enacted the new technology, and aside from the little snafu, <clears throat> the lack of timeline. Um, I'm pretty darn excited. You can actually find things now. Before, it was like one of those games that you pay for that you have to find the stuff in the house. Then you realize you have to pay extra to actually find the stuff in the house. And you can't really find anything in the house. And that's how it was working on our website. You couldn't find anything in the house. You should be able to find anything in the house now, as long as it's only back six months. If we want it to go back many years, we can pay for that. We can have it go back as long as we want. We can have it go back to... 1900 and you can find it and all you need to put in is a couple of words or you can be super specific and find exactly what you want I messed around trying it on a bunch of different levels and it is fantastically great so that's just my plug I am fantastically just great really happy that you can so actually really now good. find the stuff you're looking for on our on our web page so Judy one question I had, um, so I've been playing around with it, and I'm excited as well. Uh, <laughs> Not as excited as I am, Not I can as excited as you, <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, yeah. but can you also, it seems like most of the searches are attached 
to agendas and things, is there a way to just kind of pull up individual doc documents? So for example, mm. I typed in 2019 village goals, hoping that I would find that two page or whatever. And you won't, because okay. we didn't pay for that. Gotcha. It will find ordinances, resolutions, minutes, agendas, anything that plan, same with planning commission. All of planning commissions, those, and all of councils, those. And if you wanted more, we'd have to, yeah, you, you couldn't do it or it would cost us a honk, honk, honk load of money. And, you know, the other, the other fix is to actually make eGov do what it says it will do, which is to allow for a word search. And they keep saying they're working on that, um, but they have not yet actually arrived at a solution so that, that it actually will word search the way that they say that it will. I mean, if, if our website worked in the way that they promise us it does, you could find those documents. Okay. So we've applied this, lay, this overlay to the things that I can easily send as files and that they can plug into that system. But discrete documents, unless we link them to a resolution, and then you can find them. Okay. Yeah, well, let's try to figure out some kind of workaround. Um, and alternatively, it could be like a web page with key documents, you know, just things that people, you know, would want to like, pull up. And I hear where you're going, and I think maybe I can work with Jordan Gray to figure out a workaround for the for documents. Okay. Because we were looking at such a big picture before with literally everything being not findable. Mm -hmm. Now that we've moved those that chunk into you can find it now, I think I can maybe work with Jordan on the other part. <laughs> See? Yeah. See now, right. there's some excitement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you just did the link? Is that well, I mean, I just off of the agenda? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's great because, yeah, like Judy said, you can now find the places on the agenda where yeah. you want to read up and not yeah. go through 140 pages. Right. So, well, thank you, Judy. Okay. I appreciate the work on that. Um, definitely will help people to participate more um, and oh, be yeah. more engaged. Yeah. Um, okay. So I believe that that is uh, our last item. And uh, now for any future agenda items. Um, so one thing that I'm uh, thinking more about, and since Marianne, I, I agree with you about Nancy's comment about a work session, maybe we can try to, we haven't done them uh, as regularly as we did in the past. Uh, I always like the work session idea with the caveat that um, a lot of times people don't come, all right, but maybe, maybe they will. Um, and maybe we could try to think about one that is kind of a wrap up to the goals process. Yeah. So if we could do our community engagement and then we kind of put out there that, hey, let's sit around the table and talk about these goals and some of the feedback that we got, uh, answer questions, that sort of thing. Um, I think that's a great thing to do. Um, and, and I don't mean to sound like I'm poo-pooing it or anything, uh, or I didn't mean to sound that way, but I just want us to be realistic about why sometimes we don't put efforts in community conversations and things, because uh, a lot of times uh, we don't get a lot of engagement. So, but let's try. Well, well now, uh, just in fair, we right? did not plan our goal-setting work session for people to come to, truly. We didn't plan it and go, hey, 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 come to our goal setting workshop. We're going to have it during the day. So if you work. But we have, we have in the past, though. So we have tried to do okay. that. So, wow. um, but yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I, I think it's a great idea. Um, okay. And uh, so. even, if, if, even if my voice is not sounding excited, I really do think it's a great idea. <laughs> well, so we, I'm a little tired. That, that, that means you're more excited. So let me, let me ask something. Does it make sense to, similar to, Going in and out of executive session, um, would it make sense to maybe sometimes move from formal meeting, you know, into a okay? I'm getting no, so I won't go on. <laughs> well, what what I was going to say was what you've done in the past uh, with work sessions that you, you kind of moved that way because a strict work session and a strict regular session were 
you created a hybrid, or the last council kind of created a hybrid. So the first part of the meeting, you just rocked through the petitions and the communications and the, and the um, legislation, which you have to get out of the way. You had to get some business done quick. And then it became a work se session on, for example, you had said, let's highlight you know, transient guest lodging. So that topic became the work session topic. And then after that r sort of regular session chunk of work was done, and no, we're, we're keeping comments limited, we're, we're getting the business done, now we're opening it up and we're sitting around a table and engaging, and, and that happened. It, and that worked, I thought, very well, because what happened when it wasn't hybrid was that we got so far behind on the business items that it was crushing. And we literally had to move away from having work mm -hmm. sessions. And unless we did it like on the fifth Monday of the month or something. No, you no, know, it, had it a special. is your regular meeting. No, no, I mean, we could have a extra meeting. That would be one option. That's just a work session, you know. That's, well, that's, I mean, that's possible, but I, I also think it almost misses the point, which is that citizens are saying, when we come to your meetings, we're not allowed to engage. So instead of saying, we'll have a special one, and you can, and it will be a special time that's different from any other time, well, man, I was all ready to go to your regular meetings because that's when I wanted to engage. I mean, some people work well with that, some people don't, but I think what I liked about the work sessions being w when the regular meetings happened was cost way less for a babysitter, A, just personal, but B, <laughs> that it was, you've already carved out this time, we're listening to you, this, we're going to engage with you during this meeting. I mean, that, that, and that seemed genuine to me as opposed to well, not genuine, but the, the other sessions that were completely outside of that were seriously huge community-wide issues where we were filling up a gym mm -hmm. with people. Well, and A and B, we've done that there, too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, I think, uh, so my recommendation would be we make it an agenda item and we talk a little bit more about how we want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Council Brother and I have a problem. Yes. I did not realize that February 18th was a holiday, and I have business travel on February 19th. I am not going to be able to be at that meeting. And a bunch of it is my stuff. Mm. <laughs> wow. <Well. laughs> and I am really sorry, because I pledged to never miss a meeting. Mm. Well. Can we just skip President's Day? <laughs> yes, you may. But I have no problem working. It's not a big deal to me. I, I mean, I, I don't have an issue with it. It's, I mean, can I we come? meet on Monday? I'm already working that day. If it was we Martin have... Luther King Day, I'd have a problem. No, but, but President's Day, eh. I mean, are we, by meeting, I mean, we can honor some presidents. I mean, can <laughs> well, we meet on Brian, Monday? We can honor Brian. <laughs> it's okay <laughs> with me. Um, I'm not opposed to it. Usually you're very strict about when we publish our meeting dates, though. So, um, but... Uh, yeah, but President's I, Day. I, mean, I don't know. It's the way. Sorry to not Well, I mean, I, I, I just, I, ne I want to be at the meeting, but I can't if sure. it's on the 19th. Mm -hmm. Um... um I have to go to the dentist that day, so I may not be very communicative. <laughs> and I, I, I would not want anything that required staff to be yeah. here because it's it's a be double time. Mm -hmm. staff. Other than, gee, well, I mean, the so. the other thing is, Doctor <laughs> Sherlock uh, Brian is not available on the 18th, so the culture of health stuff could move to. <clears throat> March 4th. I mean, the only other thing that I have is the report. It's, it's just like, like to be here. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking probably we'll come back with something about the police. Don't right. You? I would, don't want to lose momentum. Oh, man. The, the, the really true, and it's not that I'm dissing the President's Day thing, and, but I had to check three times. Is it, do we really get that off? Mm -hmm. Ruthann, are you sure we get that off? Is that a thing? Mm -hmm. And it, it's and it is a thing, but I think that a lot of people will also say, unless they're federal employees or they work in the school system, are like, wait, why aren't they meeting on Monday? I mean, it is one of those funky holidays, which is the reason I'm not too heartburned if you guys want to move it back and we'll just notice it, splash it everywhere. But it isn't one that people write on their calendar. 
President's Day. Make a cake, you know. So I'm willing to put the word out, and I'm willing to show up if you want to move it. Um, I mean, I do not have a problem with it. So if that's the if everyone's in agreement. Okay. Anyway. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. All right. Um, okay. Other future agenda items. Well, um, excuse me. Can we well, just, Sean? Is that a schedule problem for you? Okay. Not going to be celebrating at home. <laughs> so you had uh, br bringing back the 2019-04 SBC lease agreement resolution. Mm -hmm. You have a resolution to revise the investment policy. Mm -hmm. You have a 2018-04 parking <coughs> ordinance, mm -hmm. and that's all, and the review of the vetting process. That's what I had. Yep. And the transient gets lodging. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, down. Mm -hmm. And then and you said we're not doing the culture of health. No, let's move that to the next one so that they, uh, well, I, uh, we have a choice, and I wrote you because I couldn't decide about this. So. I think it would be nice if they were both here together yep. and that we had a nice amount of time to talk. Right. So in that case, we should go to the next time. To the fourth? Okay. Yeah. Great. And then we can maybe have an update on the police assessment. Um, and then, uh, Judy, if you can also update um, with the new timeline um, about our the village manager search. I thought Because we're I not going to be announcing. Oh, you, so you're moving it. everything up. I, okay, I'm, my bad. I thought that you were just moving up the... the um, because the visit's not happening till. Because the visit's moving up. Yeah, so, so I, I just, just make sure I got that you. it's aligned with the new one. Um, okay, anything else? All right. Um, wow, we actually finished before 9.30. Um, all right, so if there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. I second. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, thanks everyone. Thank you. It's been real. So maybe we can agenda planning, maybe we could knock that out while you're sitting here.